The UK is an island nation. Our lifeline to the world is the sea. Tankers transport fuel, container ships bring us essential supplies, and cruise liners carry holidaymakers near and far. But who are the faces behind these fleets? Meet the Merchant Navy. The British Merchant Navy, proud of over 200 years of history, tradition and achievements. Sailing the globe, modern day fleets and their crews continue to fly the flag while transporting over 90% of the UK's imports and exports. On these ships, the next generation of officers are being trained to take command of future fleets. For first year students, 24 year old Suzanne Kelly ex-physiotherapist Nicola Whelan, school leaver Callan Macquarie, and former trollerman Craig Dwan, a career at sea is their dream. They've completed five months of college and swapped UK waters for Miami's sunny shores. From here, they set sail for the first time on the Gateshead, a 51,000 ton container ship, home for the next three months. I just think it looks cool. <laughs> Their voyage is taking them to Panama, through the Panama Canal and across the Pacific Ocean to the Far East. It's only day three, but it's been an intensive start. Learning to live under the strict authority of Captain Mark Carter. Can you go and tell them who was making that noise to shut up? And coping with big responsibility. The captain wants us to be able to let them steer through Panama. My hands are like so sweaty, it's like unbelievable. Now there's a brief chance to catch breath with a day off on the beach near the Panamanian port of Manzanillo. Training officer Mike Mullen is showing them the sights. The day when we left the ship, you could see the, the apprehension, is isn't where we're going, but seeing them come to the beach now and the, the look on their faces, it's, it really, you can see them, they're enjoying themselves. There's no way I would ever have of thought a year ago I would have been on some beach in Panama. This is a great learning curve for them because they haven't been out the country before. They haven't met any Panamanian people, and there they are playing football, the international language. The language barrier has been a bit of an issue, but a bit of hand signals, we've been fine. Well, I think whenever you do get the chance to get ashore, you, you know, you should do it. It's not your holiday location. You've seen the real country. And this is what I like about it, because getting ashore to do this makes them a better person, and more understanding. After 43 years at sea, this journey is a special one for Mike. Well, this, this particular voyage is uh, my last on a, a, a seafaring. And some way I'll still be connected with the sea, but seeing these sites now, these, these are going to be stored in the memory bank, because I don't think I'll, I'll become the places as, as uh, sort of remote as this. Obviously, he wants to, wants to go out on a real high. You know, we're just starting out, and we want to, we want to start on a high, so... We'd very much like to... You know, like to think that when he left, he, you know, he thought he had a good bunch of cadets. It'd be quite emotional. I don't think I'll be the same fellow with a smile on his face uh, laughing at it. I'm going to, it'll be quite emotional. But with retirement comes a chance to spend more time at home with wife Dorothy, if she has time for him. She's one hell of a woman. She's in a, a ladies' barbershop chorus. She sings with a, a gospel uh, chorus sometimes. She's line dancing, tap dancing, keep fit. And just this morning she told me she's going to try the carpet bowls now. So I'm going to have to make an appointment to see her when I get home. I do like to have a social outlet, and I found that very necessary, uh, being a seafarer's wife. Not for just I think he'll be worried um, about how am I going to cope with him being at home all the time. After spending over half of their 40-year marriage apart, retirement is going to be a big change for both. I don't know whether Dorothy's going to be too pleased to see me back after such a short trip and be home for such a long time now. 
I'm looking forward to Michael coming home more this time than I have for a long time because we'll have more time together. Throughout the year, Merchant Navy cadets are released from college for on-ship training. At Warsash Maritime Academy, the next batch of recruits is preparing to board ship for the first time. Engineering trainee Colin Brown has opted for oil tankers. You'll be away in different countries, seeing the world, and just a different experience, a different way of life. His first stop, Singapore, where he'll board the British Progress, a 360,000 tonne crude oil carrier. Really, I'm looking forward to going to see it, should be. That's what I'm here for. For Paul Acker, James Ingram and Andy Carr, there is only one type of ship. I pick cruise liners because I've, I've seen them come in past my bedroom window and I just they, they are amazing things. It's been my dream since I was uh, about 10. My dad used to be in the Merchant Navy. Every time a country came on TV, he said, oh, I've been there, I've been there, and I wanted to be able to do that. If I could uh, choose the ship, I'd uh, like to go on most. It would probably be uh, one of the newer ones. They're just getting better and better every day. In Monfalcone, Italy, their dream of sailing on a brand new cruise ship is about to come true. Situated in the country's northeast, the town is home to Fincantieri shipyard and birthplace of Ventura. She is the newest, biggest and most technically advanced superliner that P&O Cruises has built for the British market. And she'll be the trainee's first posting. £300 million to build, this vessel is 15 double-decker buses high, two and a half football pitches long, and at 116,000 tonnes, she's the equivalent of 345 jumbo jets. No wonder she's been nearly two years in the making. Now, with only days left until this feat of engineering is handed over to her owners, there's a growing sense of excitement from the crew and Captain Alistair Clark. We've got all the chance we're going yeah, to need all, for... all the chance we need now and the full effect of coverage all the way up, so... Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, the level so of excitement is beginning to build and people really are itching to say, let's have the ship, we want to go. Feeling shared by Chief Technical Officer Ian Mark. It's an exciting time just seeing the ship develop from a piece of steel and coming all the way through its, let's say, its, its birth and development. Then all of a sudden you get it out there and, and you get that opportunity to run it. I want to get out there and see what it does. Let's, let's get our hands on it. But there's still a lot of work to be done before this superliner sails anywhere. The ship is, is remarkably complicated in all its different aspects. So there are frustrations, there are problems that we, we get faced with, but our job is to ultimately resolve those and we will. With the maiden voyage from Southampton looming, the pressure is on. One of the most critical things when you're building a ship like this is to have the delivery on time. But there is one man who has to be satisfied that every detail of this ship's construction passes strict maritime regulations. That's it. If not, he has the power to stop her sailing. If Ventura doesn't manage to close all our outstanding items, there is a possibility the ship would have to stay here. For a, term, for a longer term until we finish everything. And it's not just the technical build that is under pressure. With restaurants unfinished and stores just arriving, timing is tight for Ventura. Early morning off the coast of Panama, and container ship the Gateshead is primed for her Panama Canal passage. It's a big day for everyone, including the rookies. Today we've put the cadets on watches, this is their first proper sea watch. We've had Nicola on the 4 to 8 first thing this morning, she steered the ship coming out of Mantinello. When would you use this printer, what exactly is it for? This is for a recording the course, if we have any accident. We can... It's now 20 past 6 in the morning, we've just left a berth in Mantinello. We've come out to sea a little way and we're anchored at the minute and we're waiting to get through the breakwater and actually into the Panama Canal. Craig also has an early start. He's to spend all day working on deck. Craig isn't on watch, but he's got a 
arguably a more responsible job because he's shadowing the chief officer and uh, there's an awful lot for him to do today as well. <laughs> it's going to be good, man. I'm, I'm pretty excited about, about going through the canal. I'll be on the deck and I'll probably get <laughs> all the odd jobs. <laughs> and the captain? What will he be doing? What will I be doing? I don't know. Wandering around the bridge, poking people in the back so pay, pay attention, I know. The ship is cleared to raise anchor and the gateshead is on her way. Coming up, the Panama Canal, and it's a tight squeeze. These are concrete locks, and if we do touch, we're a steel ship, there will be damage. And Ventura, will she pass the surveyor's strict inspections? They have to be satisfied that they're signing off something that is completely seaworthy. Over one million seafarers keep the world's commercial fleets afloat. But without new recruits, this vital workforce would be seriously weakened. It's more than a job. You need to be the right kind of person with the right kind of approach and attitude to succeed here. Cadets are the future. Four Merchant Navy new starts are former fisherman Craig Dwan, sailing obsessed Suzanne Kelly, school leaver Callan Macquarie, and ex-physiotherapist Nicola Whelan. I'm nearly 30 and um, I've tried a couple of careers before that haven't really worked out for us, so I hope I can do a good job. They're training on massive container ship, the Gateshead, which is en route from Miami to the Far East. Today, the crew have the challenge of navigating the Panama Canal. Can I stop and drift for a few moments? Of course I can. Callan is taking over the helm. He'll steer the ship towards the first canal locks under the watchful eye of Captain Carter. It's a very, very important job, keeping a ship on, on course, taking the orders, responding to those orders, being aware of, of the position of the ship at the time. Callan has done well, but steering the gate's head through the narrow canal locks is a different story. This, the most difficult job on the passage, is down to Captain Carter. Ship in front of us, he's going to the lock that you can see on our port side. We're going to the one that's on the starboard side. This man-made waterway is a 50-mile route between the Atlantic and the Pacific, where ships head in both directions. The gate's head will be raised up through the first set of locks into a series of lakes. She'll then cross Panama to a further two locks, where she'll be lowered into the Pacific Ocean. Today, Captain Carter is in charge of the largest class of ship allowed through the canal, known as a Panamax. So he needs to be at the top of his game. I'm watching to see what we're up to. We've got to be tucked into the side, and the back end was off a wee bit. But if you give it too much, well, we would break the Panama Canal. That wouldn't do at all, would it? OK, I'm in. The locks are just like huge water elevator. We take the ships from ocean level, and in three steps operation, we put the ship into the lake level, which is 26 meters above the oceans. Then once the ship arrives to the opposite end, we lower the ship from 26 meters back to ocean level. Simple, really, but without the canal, the ship would have a two-week, 8,000-mile journey around South America. Instead, this will take just 12 hours, but strict conditions apply. You need to pay the toll in advance. We do not accept credit cards nor personal checks. The creation of the canal was no easy feat. Although the idea dates back to the 1500s, the French made the first attempt to build one in the 1880s, but they failed, with over 20,000 dying from malaria and yellow fever. These were just mountain and jungle. So what they did, they cut and carved through the mountains to build the Panama Canal. In the early 1900s, the Americans successfully completed the venture, opening for business in 1914. Back then, vessels were a lot smaller. Dead slow ahead. 
Captain Carter has sailed through the canal 12 times, but he's not taking any chances. He's only got 50 centimetres between ship and wall. That's just bigger than a Panama hat. These are concrete locks, and if we do touch we a steel ship, there will be damage. We generally leave a bit of paint behind. The gateshead might need a new paint job, but the Panama Canal is still intact. Just bought an alligator. I'm just stuff that. Like, the sheer scale of it, you can't even imagine. The whole experience was pretty overwhelming. You've got the smells and the sounds as well, which obviously you kind of get from a picture. We're nearly there now. Most of the water has come out either side of us. It's good to see it. It's just like a canal cut straight out of the jungle. It's, it's wicked. Another port, another girl. Ventura is nearing completion at the Fincantieri shipyard in Italy. At the moment, we're storing the ship up with all our own stores, engine stores, hotel stores, uh, not just the food and beverage and things like that, but all the cabins have to be made up. They're just doing all the polishing up and finishing out the interior, the few little scratches and touching up the paintwork, um, laying the few last bits of carpet and such like. Lying just ahead, a test cruise and the maiden voyage from Southampton with over 3,000 paying passengers. It's crucial that this ship leaves on time. While everyone works intensely above and below decks, one man is checking every detail of their work. Okay. Ship surveyor Paul McClelland has followed every step of this build. Only when he is satisfied will he give the ultimate sign-off for Ventura to sail. Where we help the shipbuilder to design and build the ship under statutory rules and regulations. So the ship owner is able and can legally sail from here and begin loading passengers and begin cruising. They have to be satisfied themselves that they're signing off something that is completely seaworthy and is within the regulations. If it's not, they can't possibly accept it. Just the final checks to complete, passenger safety. We will check that all the cabins have life jackets. We check the lifeboats and all the equipment on board that lifeboat. With final inspections over, it's good news. Today we finally finished the ship. All our documents have been handed over to the shipyard and the ship owner has accepted the delivery. We can't wait to get our hands on her and then put her through her pace and see what she can do for us. I think everybody on board, not just me, everyone's looking forward to bringing this ship home to Southampton. Back in Panama, the Gateshead is crossing Gatton Lakes, a three-hour passage which takes her to the final two sets of locks. They went very well indeed, the first lot, so everything was fine. And as the radio officer said to me once, everyone you walk away from is a good one. And we're about uh, two-thirds of the way through. This is one of the more tricky parts of the transit. We have to take an extra tug aft. We've got the thrusters on standby. And Suzanne is at the wheel. With the cadets, they are quite valuable because I have three able seamen and they're very busy. Of course, if there is a problem, they'll be taken off the wheel straight away. The route is extremely shallow in places. At worst, there's only 20 centimetres clearance between the ship's keel and the canal bed. There's not much room to manoeuvre and not much margin for error, so you have to follow his every order down to the letter. Starboard 20 on. Change wheel apart, please. Change wheel one five one. As Nicola takes over, the last two locks are in sight. For all the cadets, thoughts turn to the next 20 days at sea on the way to Japan. I'm pretty ready to be at sea for a while because it means we can get into a, a really good work and pattern and learn all we need to learn. There won't be any land between now and Japan, so making the most of it while we can see it, I suppose. Fortunately. At college, failed exams almost stop Craig getting to sea. It's going to be hard and there's going to be times where it's not as much fun as the first trip, but, you know, it's 
it's definitely for me. Youngest of the group, Callan, is also quite clear about his plans for the future. I'm a very ambitious person, so my aim is to become a master. Early 30s, to be a captain would be absolutely brilliant, but that's my target. For tall ship fanatic Suzanne, it's been all about sailing since childhood. Who you knows what the future will hold? I'd, I'd love to have a go at you know, a few different types of ship. But for now, I'm happy right here where I am. I'm staying right here, thank you very much. And for ex-physiotherapist Nicola, a failed career had put her under extra pressure to make things work. I think I've definitely made the right decision. I'm happy at the minute, and hopefully that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. It's a long way from home, but you know, that's what it's all about, man. I'm getting out and getting to see the world. As for Mike, it may be two months before retirement, but his last cadets are making him proud. They've only been on board a few days, and they're absolutely tremendous. They've, they've come out on top, so it's, it's onwards and upwards from here. Three hours later, the Gateshead completes her journey through the Panama Canal and into the Pacific. For the cadets, it's the start of 11 weeks at sea, taking them to Japan, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan and the USA. A journey of a lifetime for some. For them, it's only the beginning. Next time on the Merchant Navy, a brand new ship and a new set of trainees. But it's not all plain sailing as Ventura's test cruise throws up some problems. The leak, I suspect, is from the steam system that we use to provide the hot water and, and heating in the galleys and such like. To shut that whole steam system down would inconvenience people up in the, uh, the passenger decks. And as the new recruits start work, it's not long before they're distracted. Ta-da! The dressing room for the dancers. That's what I went to see for.